Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Kay Murray, Stevie Nicol here with you. And Gab Marquotti is also joining us. And let's get straight into your questions. The first one is for Gab. It's from Saif Tamim who says, Gab, do you think Kylian Mbappe will make the move from PSG to Real Madrid this summer? If so, how much are PSG going to ask for him? Well, obviously, he only has a year left on his contract. Uh, this is the kid who grew up with Real Madrid posters uh, in his room. Obviously, it was Cristiano Ronaldo, who's no longer there. Um, I think it's more likely uh, that we see this move next summer. Um, I think the likeliest outcome is Kylian Mbappe extends his contract with, with Paris Saint-Germain, um, you know, possibly with some sort of release clause. So Paris Saint-Germain could still get some money back and he would still have the option of leaving. Uh, but, um, you know, clearly Real Madrid feel like they would love to have a huge signing, whether it's Mbappe or, or Holland. But I think they may need to wait 12 months to do that. Would you like to see Mbappe at Real Madrid, Stevie? I'd like to see him at Liverpool. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Madrid. that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, you know what the, the thing is as well, we're, we're, we're sort of forgetting something. Real Madrid are a little bit of turmoil right now. Who's, you know, Angelotti's gone there. How's this going to work out? Is he still going to be there in six months' time? Well, he's a they star need whisperer, a, Stevie. They, well, he's going to have to be because they need an overhaul. This time next year, they could be floundering. Now, is it likely? Probably not. Yeah. It's a possibility. All right, very, very funny. I, asks... I don't, Stevie, I don't. Go ahead, Gav. No, I was just going to say, Stevie, I, I don't think that Real Madrid are getting in, uh, an overhaul this summer. I think once the pandemic's over, once things settle down, if they were going to go for an overhaul this summer, if they had the funds to do that, I'm not sure they would have brought in Ancelotti to manage them. I, I, I think they brought Ancelotti in because they see him as continuation of Zidane's work, get what you can out of this team, play some youngsters. Um, they brought in Alaba. You got to sort out Varane, they have to sort out Sergio Ramos, make these, some of these big decisions, and then see where we are in a year's time. I, I think that's the overarching plan. And about Mbappe, so I forgot to say this earlier, Mbappe could extend his deal and he'd still be very expensive a year from now. A year from now, Erling Holland, his release clause kicks in, and at that point, he's only, worth, he's only gonna cost you uh, 70, 75 million um, because of the release clause. And at that point, if you're smart, you can play one guy off the other and, uh, and, and, and then try to try to at least get one of those two at a reasonable price. And then maybe all the fans will be arguing over Mbappe and Haaland like they used to, or like they still do with Messi and Ronaldo. Anyway, very, very funny asks, are there any dark horses that can cause a major upset <laughs> like when Greece did in 2004 or Denmark in 92? Does the 24 team format make it easier or harder for the lesser teams to make an impact? Stevie, Scotland? Well, the more games they have to play, the harder it is for somebody like Greece to to to, to come from nowhere for a start. Um, so, what qualifies as a dark horse? Somebody that's got no chance that some that you're going to turn around and say, "Well, if the stars are all aligned, then this team could win." Is that is that what a dark horse is? Well, the dark horse. I don't know. Yeah, obviously the star, the stars would have to be aligned, but. All right, we'll go Scotland then. Okay, so you're oh, giving Greece Scotland. had no chance. <laughs> so you're giving, okay, exactly. Greece had no chance. Denmark weren't even in the tournament, and they, from nowhere, uh, I think it was Yugoslavia were, were banned, and so Denmark got in and won it. So they get no chance. So Scotland's got no chance. Yeah, so maybe it's so them. Scotland has what, to be. What do you think, Gab? Any dark horses for you? Yeah, I'm going to take an easy way out. I'm going to define dark horse as somebody who has never won. The Euros before, and I will say there is a good chance a dark horse will win it. But of course, that's when I remind you that teams like England and Belgium have never won the Euros before. That's a nice answer. I like that's that. Like one. I think that one. was a great yeah. answer. No, that's true. So there you go. Yeah, there might be something nice. in it. Scotland too, yeah. uh, just says, what are the serious options for Donnarumma? I'll put this to you, Gab. There doesn't seem to be any big clubs who need a goalkeeper and have the money. Yeah, so I think they're realizing this. I think they, they just pitched way too high. Uh, it's one thing when you're negotiating with Milan and you know you have an offer of 8 million euros net on the table, which 
to put it in pounds per week for those who weren't comfortable, works out to around about 300 grand uh, a week, which would have made you one of the highest, one of the top three, four highest paid goalkeepers in the world. It's one thing, you know, when you're negotiating with that and you're saying, well, you know, I could go to Juve and, you know, they'd give me 10 million euros net a season and they'd give me, Mino Raiola, uh, a 15 million euro commission or, or whatever. Um, but then once you close the door on Milan and Milan close the door on you because they've signed Mike Magnan, then all of a sudden Juventus, assuming they were ever interested, remember Juventus, A, have financial issues of their own and B, would need to shift Wojciech Chesney, which isn't easy because he's on pretty big money as well and he has two or three years left on his contract. Um, Juventus can say, oh, by the way, did we say 10 million? Well, look, now that we're the only people bidding, maybe, maybe we can give you 6 million. Uh, and you're kind of back to square one. And his difficulty is that all the other top sides in Europe, with a possible exception of Paris Saint-Germain, have a very good goalkeeper who's under a long-term contract and makes a ton of money. Um, and on top of that, there's very good goalkeepers who make a ton of money who could be on the market, like, like guys like David De Gea, uh, guys like Kepa at Chelsea. Their clubs would love to move them on. So he's in a really tough spot that way. Um, if Milan aren't going to take them back, and again, my understanding is Rayola did say, hey, can we, can we revisit this? And Milan so far have said no. Uh, then maybe his option might be signing somewhere for, uh, for a year or a couple years, take less money, but have a very low release clause so that if he plays well, maybe he can move on. But I think, I think so far it looks as if Mino Rayola, who normally plays these things very well from his perspective, has played this one very, very badly because he's out there and it's hard to see how he's going to get, you know, a top team without taking a pay cut. Yeah, and obviously normally ends up with a ton of money for himself and his clients. Stevie, <laughs> Mr. What's in a Name asks, who would you choose as Trent's replacement in the England squad? Well, it wouldn't be a fullback. Because <laughs> I think they've got plenty of fullbacks. Um, I think Gareth Southgate's and for me is going to either pick Lingard or Ward Prowse. Uh, that's the kind of guy he is. Uh, it's not, it's all about the team, it's all about the squad, it's all about the camaraderie, um, which it is, that's, that's important. Uh, and so I believe it's going to be one of the players that have already been with them. Uh, a Lingard or a Ward Prowse, and, and I would suggest he takes a Ward Prowse. Okay, I'm wearing the right colours for the next question for the old yellow submarine. Villarreal USA, I'll put this to you, Gab. They ask, how far can Gerard Moreno and Pau Torres carry Spain in the mm. Euros? Uh, well, obviously they'll be carrying them from different ends of the pitch. Um, I, I run out of superlatives for, for Gerard Moreno because, um, you know, he not only scores a ton of goals, and he scored a ton of goals last year, so it's not like it came out of nowhere, um, but he's also such a fantastic assist man as well. Um, you know, in some ways, there, there's maybe even a little bit of a parallel with, with Harry Kane in that, you know, he scores and he sets up others. Um, so I think he can play a big role for Spain, and, and I think Luis Enrique should, should just have no doubts and say, you know, this is my guy up front, even though it is perhaps a different system in some ways. Pau Torres at the back, you really like what you see. I think it is a big step up. Here we're still talking about uh, a very young man. Um, Spain have certain areas where they're very strong and they have other areas where I think they have big deficiencies. And when I look at some of the choices that Luis Enrique made, some of the guys he, he left out, and just even the mere fact that there's not a single Real Madrid player in the squad, not even somebody like Nacho who's entirely uh, you know, inoffensive to anybody, um, you know, you. You say that, all right, Luis Enrique is going to do things his way. He's a man of conviction. And, and he's either going to walk away a fool or a king, I think, in, in this tournament. But he certainly has shown just what a bold manager he is. How perfect a description for Nacho. Inoffensive to anybody. I think that's very fair. Uh, Gab, <laughs> Safi Sumbal says, were you surprised to see Sterling selected ahead of Bamford and Lingard for the Euros? Bamford scored 17 goals in 38 games. Lingard, nine goals in 16. Sterling scored only 14 times in 49 games. He had a shocker the other night against Chelsea. What was Southgate thinking? I think he was thinking that we see this all the time. We see very good players who have bad seasons and then suddenly at the end of the season uh, come alive. Um, you know, you can throw whatever numbers you want at me. 
Sterling is still a more technically gifted player than Bamford and Lingard put together, frankly. Bamford's been a tremendous story. He's done very, very well. Uh, but Leeds United play nothing like England. And, you know, you play up front on a team that plays the way Bielsa teams do. And, and you're a good finisher. You know, you're going to score goals. Um, equally, uh, I look at a guy like Lingard. Again, England don't want to be playing the way David Moyes' as West Ham played. They want to be playing a different type of football. So I, I'm not surprised. I think he hopes that you know, Sterling's there can come alive all of a sudden. You know, maybe he starts running at people, he beats them, he gives you an extra alternative. I think the good news for England is that relative to previous tournaments where, you know, Sterling was, was pretty much the man uh, or, or close to it, he certainly isn't going into this tournament. It's not even entirely clear to me that, that he's going to start. I think that's going to take a lot of the pressure off him. But, you know, look, if it ends up being, you know, I don't know, Rashford, Kane and, and Jaden Sancho in your front three, that's still pretty good. And then Sterling's just kind of the cherry on top if and when you need him. What do you think, Stevie, about that? Oh, I think says Kate's spot on. Yeah, I, think I agree with every single thing that Gab says, which which That's is a not, it's a, it's a pretty rare thing that, but yeah, it he's is. 100%, yeah, I mean. Press record. <laughs> yeah, Bamford, Bamford, having not <laughs> been in the squad before, it, it would be a huge thing for him. I don't, I don't know whether he would settle anyway. Lingard's, Let's be honest, had a good six months, uh, and Sterling's had a great four years, and he's just gone a little quiet, um, but he's still effective. So I think it's a no-brainer. I absolutely think Southgate has got this one right. Yeah. Well, there'll be more Euro talk on tomorrow's show on ESPN FC. Ali and Shaka will be here. We thank Stevie and Gab so much for joining us. We thank you guys too. Make sure you catch us every day daily on ESPN+. Plus. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.